everyone my name is prabhnaman kaur i am doing btech agriculture engineering from punjab agriculture university ludhiana today i would like to present my topic on harvesting of biomass and its coppicing characteristics today we will learn about what is biomass harvesting its methods what is coppicing its coppicing strategies advantages and its characteristics biomass harvesting what is biomass harvesting it is the removal of biomass from field which is dependent on the state of biomass that is grass woody or crop residue it is the expanded use of forest harvesting residuals for new products forest produce a lot of woody biomass that can be harvested for producing electric power and heat or as alternative fuels for heating or to use them in vehicles Biomass includes plant or animal matter that can be converted into fibers or other industrial chemicals including biofuels. The moisture content and the end use of biomass also affect the way biomass is collected. Trees represent a dense biomass resource that can be stored on the stump and harvested in all seasons. A biomass harvest provides a source of renewable products such as fuel. now harvesting of agriculture based residue modern combined harvesters deliver straw and chaff together other threshing equipments separates them stover field residues of large cereals such as maize and sorghum stubble stumps of the reaped crop left in the field after harvest modern combined harvesters The picture shows modern combined harvesters. Collection involves operations such as gathering, packaging, and transporting biomass to a nearby site for temporary storage. Methods of biomass harvesting. There are basically two methods: one pass method and two pass method. One pass method. One pass timber harvesting system harvest round wood and biomass simultaneously. it is the most cost effective extraction method conventional timber harvesting equipment such as fellow bunchers harvesters skidders and forwarders to harvest and recover woody biomass are used advantages of one pass method other than adding a small to medium sized chipper they have to make few if any modification to their current system it provides value from traditional forest products the system provides energy or bio based product value and reduces the cost of preparing the land for reforestation whole tree harvesting feller bunchers are the most common felling equipment two types can be used depending on the characteristics of the site steeper slopes require a more expensive tracked swing to tree machine while more level terrain allows the use of less expensive rubber tire drive to tree feller bunchers rubber tire feller buncher the pic shows rubber tire feller buncher now one or more tire rubber tire skidders are also used in this system feller bunchers fell all the material while skidders transport it to the log landing Here the picture shows rubber tire skidder. At the landing, a chipper is used which processes the biomass, while other merchantable products are stored and loaded onto trucks for transport to the appropriate market. Limbs and tops from merchantable trees are also chipped. A major drawback of the system can be the grit contamination. associated with the material being dragged across the ground chipper a chipper is shown chipping biomass into the chip van harvester the system uses a harvester that processes that is fills the limbs bucks and piles both biomass and traditional products into a separate piles harvester forwarder 
loads both types of material and carries them to the landing. Traditional products are loaded with a conventional log loader while the biomass is chipped with a chipper. In this system, leaves, needles, parts of branches and tops remain on the site. A forwarder eliminates most potential grid contamination. The picture shows a forwarder. Two pass method. It harvests and recovers round wood and biomass in separate passes. The unconsolidated biomass is either left in the woods or is piled near the landing for later processing and transport. It is less popular and has not proven to be as cost effective as the one pass method. Advantages of two pass method. It offers the opportunity for smaller, specialized biomass harvesting contractors to operate if conventional timber harvesting contractors do not wish to do so. Some examples of two-pass system are pre-harvest. In this system, traditionally unmerchantable trees of all sizes are felled for use as woody biomass. The system offers some benefits because it reduces vegetation in the stand. Post-harvest In this system, all merchantable products are felled with feller buncher. Coppicing characteristics of biomass Coppicing The word coppice is derived from the French word couper which means to cut. It is the practice of cutting trees and shrubs to ground level, promoting vigorous regrowth and a sustainable supply of timber for future generations. Cutting an established tree down to its base instigates the fresh growth of many smaller shoots which quickly grow upwards towards the sky. After 8 to 15 years, these are then harvested, restarting the cycle once more. It can help to prevent the manifestation of dead or diseased wood in the tree by renewing constant fresh growth and the removal of old wood, allowing the tree to live for a lot longer than if it were left uncoppiced. Here is a picture showing an example of coppicing on a willow. We have noticed the new growth coming from below the cut. The cut is angled downward to deflect water. Now, if the shrubs are coppiced too high, gaps will form at the base of the hedge as it grows, resulting in a hedge that will not be stock proof. It will also cause further problems when you come to lay the hedge in the future. The best species for coppicing are any of the willow species, hazel, alder and hawthorn. Here is the finished hedge of the coppiced shrubs. A newly coppiced hedge. It looks drastic but it will result in new, healthy and strong growth. Here we see the stems should be cut near to the ground level. So the first picture is marked as correct whereas the second picture is marked as incorrect because here the shrubs are coppiced too high which will result in the gaps formation at the base of the hedge as it grows. Cut angled outwards to shed water. Here the picture shows A as the uncoppiced shrub, B as newly coppiced, C as the new growth from the coppiced shrub, and a mature coppice is shown in the picture D. Advantages of coppicing It is cheaper and requires less skilled labor than hedge laying. It rejuvenates old plants and provides an opportunity to gap up the hedge without restricting light to the new plants. As with laying, this is the best carried out in winter avoiding very frosty weather. It is an option when Head grow shrubs have become too overgrown for laying. 
that is stems over 125 mm to 150 mm 5 to 6 inches dia the hedge has too many gaps or when small gaps need to be opened up for planting src willow it is planted as rods or cuttings in spring using special equipment at a density of 15000 per hectare the stools readily develop multiple shoots when coppiced, well suited for use as energy crops. Yield is dependent on site, water availability, weed control, planting density, light and temperature. Characteristics of SRC Willow In fertile sites, growth can be very strong during the first two years after coppicing. The first harvest is in winter, typically three years after cut back, again using a special equipment. However, a cycle of two or four to five years is also common. Plantation may be expected to be viable for about 30 years before it because necessary to replant and can reach seven to eight meter in height at harvest. The site should be reasonably flat or with a slope no more than 7% and it needs to be at least 3 hectare. Now SRC Poplar It displays more apical dominance than willow and is therefore less ready to develop multiple stems following coppicing. Harvesting requires similar equipment to willow. However, owing to the tendency of poplar to form fewer heavier stems. Yield is very site dependent. Average yield on a suitable site is likely to be in the region of 8 oven dry tons per hectare per year. Characteristics of SRC Poplar Planting density is 10 to 12,000 per hectare. Cut back takes place late in the following winter. Growth is in the first year following cut back or harvest is generally not as rapid as in subsequent years. Removal of a poplar crop at the end of the useful life of the plantation can be more difficult as poplar often forms a large taproot which will generally require a large excavator to remove or more time to decay naturally. Broadleaf Copies Many traditional broadleaf species can be grown as copies such as ash, hazel, sweet chestnut etc. The duration is typically longer than for willow or poplar and the yield is lower. May be useful to produce smaller diameter logs and stems for, mo for both firewood and traditional coppice markets. Thank you for listening. For any queries, you can mention them in the chat box.